In 2012, Dwight Howard was the reigning three-time Defensive Player of the Year, and he used this star power to try to get his coach fired. Do you believe that Dwight has asked him to be fired? Yes. I know he has. I, I was told it was true by people in our uh, management. The only thing I'm ever uncomfortable with is bullshit. Noticing this was happening, Dwight Howard did the most awkward thing possible. Yes, Dan, we're not worried about that, right? That's what I just said. We're yes. going to be worried about winning games. Yeah, what's our main concern right now? Jameer, we have to uh, stop Carmelo Anthony and the New York Knicks. Dwight's coach, Stan Van Gundy, would run from this extreme awkwardness, leaving Dwight on his own to say, Stan just said that you wanted him fired. I said that. Mom, asking you, since you guys got so many sources. I didn't hear anything. The fans were appalled. This is like a WWE segment. Easily the most passive aggressive superstar in NBA history. And that's how Dwight Howard's career ended. To this day, Dwight remains in denial that he even wanted Stan Van Gundy fired, saying, they said, hey, you should go put your arm around Stan and let everybody know you are all okay. So I was like, okay, I don't have a problem with Stan. That day they said me and Stan had some sort of beef or something like that where I wanted him fired. And I was like, like, what? I never said that. Except Dwight himself admitted to Hannah Storm that he did say that. Storm, have you said it in past seasons? Howard, have I said it before? Ah, uh, being upset. Yeah, I've said it. To make things even worse, Van Gundy was fired as in December of that very season. Dwight had demanded a trade and then that summer, he doubled down on that demand and the Orlando Magic were forced to move him, sending him to the Los Angeles Lakers where his career would fall off of a cliff. Dwight would later call this interview the worst day of his life. The question is why? What's up Mike here and maybe because all of Dwight Howard's success came when his coach was Stan Van Gundy. From 2008 to 2012 on the Orlando Magic, Dwight Howard was named first team All-NBA all five seasons while he was also a three-time defensive player of the year and he was only 26 years old. Almost an entire year younger than Steph Curry was when Steph won his first MVP and championship. Curry would go on to win another MVP and three more titles as he cemented himself as an all-time great while Dwight after the 2012 season made just two more all-star teams and was left off the NBA's 75th anniversary team. A decision that Stan Van Gundy called ridiculous. Ridiculous. The time I was here, to me, the only two guys you could even talk about in his league at that time were LeBron and Kobe. Look, for him to not be in the top 75, you cannot make a case that Anthony Davis had a better career than Dwight, Dwight Howard. That's absolutely ridiculous. LeBron, Kobe, Dwight. Quite a claim, however, the evidence backs it up. When Dwight Howard was taken as the number one pick by the Orlando Magic in the 2004 draft, he was seen as a tremendous prospect, but also as a risk. Many thought college player of the year, Emeka Okafor, a recent national champion at UConn, was the real number one pick. Emeka would win rookie of the year, but Dwight would prove everyone wrong. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. Because of course, as you already know, the NBA season has been crazy. We've already had some incredible buzzer beaters, some wild on the court moments. Yes, SeatGeek, the place where I personally buy my tickets, which means you may have noticed that currently Drake is on tour. Drake. And luckily, SeatGeek is hooking us up. They're giving us a special deal where no matter what, if you're a new SeatGeek customer or not, you can use code MIKE10 for 10% off any concert you buy on SeatGeek. That's right, code MIKE10 works no matter what. You could have bought a million tickets on SeatGeek before this. MIKE10 is going to get you 10% off your next order. So take out your phone, open the SeatGeek app, add code Mike10, get 10% off. This is a no brainer to me. That is code Mike10 for 10% off of your next order. Thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into that video. Rapidly growing from a 12.10 rebound per game rookie to a member of the first team all NBA in his fourth season. As at the age of 22, he averaged 20.7 points, 14.2 rebounds and 2.1 blocks per game. While in the very next season, Season 2009, he would go on to win the first of his three straight Defensive Player of the Year awards as Stan Van Gundy built an all time revolutionary offense around Dwight. Many see the seven seconds or less Phoenix Suns as the inspiration for the Golden State Warriors dynasty, as the Suns were the first team to succeed at a very high level with a very high up.
up tempo style of play however if we're talking about three-point shooting it was dwight howard's orlando magic teams that showed us the power of spreading the court with three-point shooters in the 2023 season nba teams on average attempted 34.2 three-pointers per game however in 2009 that number was just 18.1 as although the league had created the three-point line back in 1980 until the 2015 warriors not a single champion won through the use of the three ball even the 2011 mavericks led by hall of famer dirk nowitzki known to be one of the best big man shooters of all time won the title after dirk attempted just 2.4 three-pointers a game in the mavs 2011 run the magic were very different for their time their star player in dwight was a center who could not shoot for more than three feet but that didn't matter through the use of a pick and roll offense and putting shooters around dwight the rest of the team would bomb away as dwight would score at will in the post in the 2009 season orlando put up 26.2 threes a game second in the entire nba and then they watched as this strategy paid off big time in the 2009 eastern conference finals facing the number one seed 66 win cleveland cavaliers led by 24 year old mvp lebron james dwight howard and the orlando magic took down the Cavs in six despite the fact that they were not only the lower seed but also they were without their only other all-star in jameer nelson in the nba finals the magic would lose in five games however this series against the lakers may have been very different if courtney lee had just made this shot in game one only six tenths of a second left magic and bounding courtney lee again with Dwight Howard as the team's superstar, the Orlando Magic looked like they were on pace to become one of the best teams in the NBA for years to come. In his 2009 playoff run, Dwight averaged 20.3 points, 15.3 rebounds, and 2.6 blocks per game. And in game six, when he sent LeBron home, Dwight had a 40.14 rebound explosion. Remember, Dwight was just 23 years old at the time, one year younger than LeBron. So what in the world went wrong? Why is Dwight currently playing? in the Philippines as LeBron is still competing at the highest level. Short answer, Dwight Howard's ego got in the way. Give me your Stan Van Gundy. Go! Run! Move! Dwight, what are you doing? Dwight, can you get a rebound with two hands? Always a friendly guy, Dwight was the fan favorite in 2009 as he became the first player to receive 3 million All-Star votes from the fans in NBA history and up until 2012, the Orlando Magic years, that story remained the same. In 2012, he was still the top vote getter in the All-Star game in the entire league. Then came his trade demand, then came this incredibly awkward interview with Stan, and then Dwight got what he wanted, he was moved to the Lakers where finally, in his mind, he was going to be the star that he deserved to be. It has been speculated that Dwight's back injuries took him down. Injuries, though, were not the cause of a fall that went this far. The evidence backs up everything. Because of Dwight's popularity, it was widely reported that he wanted the ball more in the low post, the worst place possible for both his style of play and the direction the league was headed. Some centers were blessed with a soft touch, aka Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Others in the low post were blessed with the incredible physicality of a Shaquille O'Neal. Dwight Howard was the ultimate pick and roll rim runner. At the rim in 2009, he took 699 shots and made 71% of them. In that season, he dunked the ball 266 times alone while also showing us his biggest weakness. As from 3 to 10 feet, Dwight Howard was simply horrible. In 2009, Dwight would take nearly the same amount of shots from 3 to 10 feet as he did at the rim, except from 3 to 10 feet, he made just 42.7% of his attempts. For comparison, in the 2023 season, Nikola Jokic took only 376 shots at the rim and 642 from 3 to 10 feet. Jokic, from 3 to 10 feet, shot 61.4%. This was easily a correctable mistake. All it took was handing Dwight Howard a stat sheet to show him. Hey, Hey, this isn't working out. If you are taking a horribly inefficient shot at a tremendous rate, it is going to damage the team, of course. The thing is, that is exactly what Dwight Howard continued to do throughout his entire career as he remained in his prime. Popping up shot charts from the 2012 Magic, the 2013 Lakers, the 2015 Rockets, and the 2017 Hawks. One thing remains constant. At the rim, he could not be stopped and continued to shoot an unstoppable percentage. He also continued to shoot three to 10 
feet shots at a high rate and at a low percentage. What if LeBron James in his prime suddenly took 12 three-pointers a game and made 30% of them? Would he have been worse or better? For whatever reason, Dwight Howard himself believed he had all the answers as his coaches and teammates disagreed. Two-time MVP Steve Nash on the Lakers made headlines with his open frustration about Dwight. He didn't seem like he really wanted to do a pick and roll offense, maybe because he had run one in Orlando for so long and he wanted to get it in the post more. Dwight would get what he wanted again. He ended up on the Houston Rockets with a young star in James Harden where it was reported by Chris Sheridan that Dwight Howard is extremely unhappy in Houston playing second fiddle to alpha dog James Harden. Three teams, three problems, and by the time the 2016 season was over, his final year in Houston, Dwight had gone from the best center in basketball to someone who would never make an all-star game again. And in terms of just pure individual awards, it took Shaq six seasons to Dwight's four to make the first team All-NBA, and Shaq played until his junior year at LSU while Dwight came right out of high school. Shaq still stands with eight first team All-NBAs to Dwight's five. Every stop of Dwight Howard's career, people have had problems with him as Dwight has made it all out to seem like all of these incidences are one big misunderstanding. They are not. Even on the team he won a championship for, the team people used to defend his comeback, the Bubble Lakers, he was kicked off of after an altercation with Anthony Davis. Emotions running very high on the Laker bench between those two. I don't know what happens from there. They end up shoving one another. On Club Shay, Shannon Sharp would ask about this, and Dwight would say, Would you be willing to go back to the Lakers? I would have went willing to go back to the Lakers. I've been willing to go back. Y'all could give your boy a meal or two. What was I, I don't I don't remember what transpired with you. Me and AD. Yeah. They don't know what happened and all that. And it came back like it was all it was my fault. Right. But you and AD worked it out, right? Yeah, we talked right after that. Right. Dwight and AD would say that this was over a pick and roll miscommunication. They would say they squashed it right after. However, Anthony Davis remains a Laker in 2024 while Dwight is playing in the Philippines. A massive drop off from a man who was once seen as worthy of blatantly stealing Shaq's nickname Superman on national television. Superman is in the building. <laughs> yes, he is. Clark Kent is winning the phone booth and he comes out. I only respond to people that are in the top 75, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say a fitting end to one of the biggest career downward spirals we have ever seen. So there we have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I do find it interesting that somehow Dwight has managed to position himself as blameless for his own career. I was watching those Dwight years though. I defend everything I said in this video. It does seem Dwight is a great guy. It seems like he's always happy and is having a good time, but there is no denying he demanded a trade, got his coach fired and then refused to ever not post up his entire career. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way, if you're new to the channel, you never miss a video like this. And we are on that path to 2 million subscribers. It would be awesome if you joined in. Even you, Dwight, if you're watching. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think, and again, have an awesome day.